You know the phrase, no thoughts, head empty, is actually trending really well in the 19 to 34 demographic. Try it out in your cashier, it might get you a free can of organic refried beans, but let me run this one by you. Week empty, no plans. What if you were able to throw an entire 40 hour work week at your development as an artist? What would you be able to get out of it? And even if you don't have just a full week available, the value of concentrated time put towards your work is the point of this video. I had a very positive experience this week implementing a couple of things and devoting the week to improving my work. And I'd like to share the results with you and show you how to do the same. Now, you might rightfully say, but Brooks, aren't you a professional artist? How is spending all week on art any different than your normal routine? Well, it might surprise you to know that with all of the other things that come up, whether it's teaching, making videos, administrative work, everything that comes up when you're running a small business and any number of distractions, if you aren't careful, the amount of time that you spend with pencil to paper can be surprisingly low. I could easily get through a week with like five hours of drawing in it. And even if you are drawing, you might not necessarily be doing anything meaningful to improve. So I got everything done ahead of time in order to treat this week as a retreat. That includes work, obligations, and chores. I also took some time on Sunday to meal prep, some healthy big meals for our lunches so they'd be ready without needing to make them. This might seem small, but it's actually something pretty huge that I've started to realize recently, is that doing creative work is incredibly difficult when I'm at a caloric deficit, you know, brain fog, things like that. But so often, focusing on work makes me not prioritize eating the right stuff or eating soon enough, which just becomes a sick cycle. Here are some structure things that were incredibly important. Each morning would end at 12 for lunch, and only then would I check email, social media, the news, anything like that. This has been a huge deal because not only does it keep distraction at bay, any kind of negative input in the morning can actually spiral or derail the entire day. Whereas the opposite, a proactively moving morning spools you up to be unstoppable. The other big structural thing is something we talked about last week, each day strictly ending at 6 p.m. No art making or thinking beyond that point. A clear incision is made in the day, it's time to relax, do whatever else you need to do that's restorative. This was really helpful. Not only was the relaxation guilt-free, but every single day as it hit 6 p.m., I didn't want to stop drawing. It made me excited for the next day, and that was such a good, positive feedback loop. Whether you can set a full week aside or you only have a day, implementing this is so good for motivation. It's like refueling the car at a quarter tank instead of stranding yourself on the side of the road because you ran out of gas. Now, how did I spend this week? Well, you might find it to be all over the place. That's definitely valid. You might choose to devote a similar time towards one skill or project or discipline for yourself. For me, this was about catching up on all of the different little things that I tell myself would be nice to get to if I ever had the time. So on Monday morning, it was all about using traditional mediums, but also doing something that we talked about in John Lauren's interview, taking a step back and rediscovering why I'm making what I make, reevaluating, finding the goalposts, and seeing what those core motives are. It's really helpful to do this every once in a while, especially if you're seeing signs of burnout or if it feels like you're just going through the motions of something. Monday afternoon, I did a little bit of study with landscape art and subsequently ruined it with highlighters, but a lot of cool things I figured out, and I wrapped up the day making this vintage travel poster for Stormfellers. Tuesday was all about doing master studies. Tuesday morning, a classic study, and Tuesday afternoon, a contemporary study. This Lay and Decker study from Tuesday morning was one of my favorite things from this week. Style studies are a great way to understand more about technical craft, but also to figure out how an artist made the decisions that they did. Wednesday, I spent some more time on environment design. I took a few lessons from an online course, and I did some studies that I wasn't particularly happy with due to not really finding my stride with landscape brushes in Procreate, but it was valuable just the same. Wednesday afternoon, I did some gesture exercises, some portraits, and a little bit more landscape and environment design. 
Thursday, I spent some time with character design specifically. I will say that later in the week, I hit something of a saturation point, just not moving quite as fast as earlier in the week. But thanks to the structure that was in place, it was still way more productive than usual. On Thursday afternoon, I drew Kevin Fagaragan's character Popple, because that's what you do. And Fridays AM and PM were spent working on the two long-term projects that I've been developing recently. And the work I did on that is secrets. If you decide to do something similar, you might want to spend time exclusively devoted to one or two skills, especially if you're still learning. Having the support of the folks in your household is also important. Tay was incredibly supportive of this initiative and actually ended up following the same structure this week with her work as well. Another huge help is instead of deciding what thing you're going to do in the moment, assign yourself tasks and things to focus on the day before or at the start of the week. It gives you one less step in the process and is like being assigned something to do from someone else. Make sure to create solid points for breaks in the morning and afternoon. Your brain, especially when it's creating things, can't focus for long stretches of time without rest. I'm incredibly grateful that I was able to arrange things to pull this week off. I know it's not necessarily an easy thing to arrange, but neither are vacations, yet we tend to prioritize getting some time away every so often in order to get some physical and mental rest. I think for your work to improve and for you to revitalize what you do, a period of at least a day or two in this vein can be a fantastic help to you, especially if pandemic fatigue has taken a toll on your passion or motivation. I can't say anything particularly remarkable about the work, the actual output that I did this week, but I do know that the effect of it has been a complete revitalizing of the motivation and passion that I have for making art. For, for real, it's fun again, which I can't say for other months in this year. It's now been 12 months since the start of Biko's Backpack. I am incredibly grateful to everyone who has been supporting it. And to top off the first year of backpacks, isn't it fitting that we have a Biko's Biko backpack. I love this hard enamel pin. We finally have a Biko trading card, and that mini print that you saw me finish up earlier in this video is in there as well. You can get Biko's backpack at patreon.com slash bageldenizen, and I can't wait for what's coming next for the project. And if you've got the time and structure down but would like some education to help your drawing and character design, the Learn Character Design course is over 18 hours of learning at learncharacterdesign.com. My Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok are Bagel Denizen. Look out for some Twitch streams coming this week. Thank you for watching, and have fun creating.